Hey, how's it going? Mike Love Sky here from LI Flies, liflyesmike.com. Today I'm going to be doing a uh, quick demonstration on how to tie a Bob Spainer, um, a pattern developed by Bob Popovix. I have fished this popper for um, for years, and it's always the uh, my go-to popper when striped bass and bluefish are around, and I want to make a lot of noise. Damn, am I gonna have to do the fish in here? Oh, I got that. Got All right. Excuse the shaky video, I'm holding this here in a tripod, but just a quick uh, rundown on the materials you're gonna need. So these are adhesive eyes, half inch. We got foam cylinder popper heads here. These are five uh, eighths of an inch. Um, we have some gamagatsu. Let's get this, the name over here cleared. There we go, put this down, I'm sorry. The SP11-3L3H, these are three odds. Um, next we have some brushable uh, super glue, which any super glue works. Obviously, we, bobbin and uh, really any thread, you can use jig thread if you want to build a nice base on the hook. Um, we have some pearl Chanel, um, also you can use crystal stas. And last but not least, um, some bucktail. Now you can so to start out, we have a uh, a three-odd gamagatsu. It's a standard size hook, pretty heavy duty. Um, you can use all sorts of hooks. Uh, you don't want to go too short in length for the uh, for your hook choice because uh, you might um, you might end up running out of space here. So pretty simple. We're gonna put some thread on the hook. We got some some bucktail here. Some chartreuse bucktail. This is an all chartreuse uh, bucktail. So what I'm going to do here is, you see I have some pretty long hairs, they're not all even. So what I'm going to do here is hold in the tail, the tail hairs right here. Grab in the front, you can see there's some, there's some mixed length hairs in here. So to taper it, we're just going to pull it like that. Pretty much what this is allowing you to do is get all the little stragglers and get everything lined up. Okay. So like that. We're going to, uh, this fly is going to be right around three and a half, four inches. So I use a reference on my vise a lot of times as to where I need to trim the material. I know ahead of time from tying, you know, dozens of flies, whatnot, that I need to tie the material here. And so what we do is we're taking the material, we're tying it to the shank, not too uh, hard here. And we're going to tie past the, uh, the hook point. We're going to go somewhat almost up to the barb here. Kind of like that. Next we're just going to tie all this down. Okay, give it a tug, make sure that's good. Now you can add flash here, you can add uh, hackle, marabou, you can polymer it, whatever you want to do. This is pretty simple. Um, next we have some some pearl uh, Chanel, crystal staz, whatever. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this and we're going to tie this. I mean you don't want to tie right near the end. You want to kind of tie the tag end in the middle here because you want to make sure that's secure. Um, you do not want this to come loose after a couple bluefish. Uh, so next we got a little zappa gap. This is a brush, uh, a, a brush, um, a brushable super glue. Little bottle here. Just put a little super glue on there. Make sure any bucktails aren't trapped under the uh, Chanel. And next we're just going to palmer the Chanel here. Now you can see I'm holding the bobbin with my hand to kind of keep it in control and I'm keeping tension on the on the Chanel. I'm going to just keep a nice even tension. We're going to palmer it up and then we're going to tie it off. When we get to the point to where the bucktail we uh, the bucktail's tied in. Because what you want to do is you want to you don't want to fully clog up the front of the hook here with bucktail and the staz because we're going to slip the popper head over and you want to make sure that it's going to fit all the way back and not not um get bunched up near the front all right so last but not least some, this is the nice thing about this regal revolution vice all right and if you're in the uh market for new vice i highly recommend regal 
I am. Um, I tie commercially full time. I tie uh, hundreds and hundreds of flies every week. And um, after meeting Don from Regal and picking up this uh, Regal Vice, I can tell you, I've already tied thousands of flies on it in the past couple months that I uh, I've had it, and it's it's worth it. Okay. So we tie off, we have our staz, our bucktail, boom. We put some thread as our base down here, we're good. You can always add more thread, whatnot, if you're worried about it coming loose. I'm not too worried, it should be fine. We're gonna super glue it, which Bob Popovics, um, he never used to do because he would swap the heads out. So, which is a cool feature, but these are being sold commercially and um, these are actually being tied for saltwaterflies.com, which uh, I'm gonna put a link in the uh, in the description down below and they're the main supplier that I buy most of my materials from I've been doing business with them for a long time and uh, recently I started tying flies for Chris over there and um, he certainly sells a lot of flies and a lot of material but when it comes to saltwater fly tying material they probably have probably the best selection hands down okay so what I'm gonna do here is we have a as you can see saltwaterflies.com we have a foam a foam cylinder it's 5 8 diameter um, you don't want to go too large of a diameter I have some larger popper heads here um, if you go too large for the hook you're gonna end up it's just gonna end up clogging the hook gap and what is this 3 quarter inch right here so if you see right here the difference in size so these are all cut up but you can see right here the difference in size of the foam heads and you could you could tie you know some pretty big poppers with it but you'd be limited in hook gap so it's better to find an appropriately matched uh, foam cylinder again if you go to saltwaterflies.com Chris has in the description all the different size uh, foam cylinders that'll match up to hook sizes so you don't have to do the guesswork okay next I'm blabbering over here next so we have the foam cylinder right what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this directly in half and we're gonna try and get a nice even cut you can use razor blades, whatever works. Got a nice pair of sharp scissors. Sharp pair of scissors. Okay, next. Bodkin. A bodkin, some sort of metal poking device. You should have a bodkin if you're saltwater fly tying. Probably because you're, you're going to be using epoxy and all sorts of things. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to heat the bodkin up. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn a hole in the foam cylinder and that's going to allow us to slide it on the hook shank so all I'm doing here is I'm just heating up this bodkin after I heat it up I'm going to give it a quick wipe on a, either a piece of paper towel or something because what it's going to do is it's going to help get some of the burnt material off alright so what you're going to want to do is the way I like to do it I like to stick the bodkin pretty down low in the popper. I don't know if I necessarily got a good video of that, but I'll show you when I'm done here. So I don't know if you can see where the hole is. Now you can stick it, you can poke it right in the middle, but the way that I tie it, and I find that I get a little bit of a better pop than um, one of my friends, for instance, when they poke it through the middle here is, the higher that the popper is in the water, and the lower the hook point sits, the more of a, a splash you're going to get. So you can see right here, we poked it, I'd say it's probably about a quarter towards the bottom. And again, I'm just going to heat it up. We're going to go through it one more time. Making sure that we kind of make a nice little hole here. All right. You know what, I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to poke it through the back side just to make sure. See, the thing is, you got to be careful. You could easily, you can easily screw this up. If you put it too far down, you'll end up ripping it trying to put it on the hook point. Okay. So next, we have some, uh, what is this, some foil tape right here. So we're going to take this. It's a peelable tape like you see we're going to now you see you'll you're gonna to want to pick the cleaner side of the popper here we're gonna take this tape and we're gonna 
line it up on the edge here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it while trying to keep it nice and neat on the edge. We're going to wrap it around 360 until it links back up with itself. What's going on here? This tape's not that sticky right there. I mean, this part is pretty self-explanatory. You should be able to figure it out. Okay. So you can see here, the tape's been wrapped around the popper. We're going to cut our excess tape off. Hold on, let's see. One note. See, I didn't think about this. You're going to want to cut it so that the where the tape ends is near the bottom. It's going to just look the best. So it doesn't really matter, but we're trying to make this look nice and neat. Okay, so you can see we have our foam cylinder here. Now, I didn't necessarily do this too clean, so I'm just going to trim this up, the excess tape. The tape was a little larger than our foam cylinder head. So I'm just going around, cleaning it up, trimming the edges, making it look nice. Okay, same thing on the back side. You can see we have some leftover uh, tape. So we're just going to trim. We're going to go around and just neatly trim it. Trying to keep as even as a cut as possible. Now you could take an X-Acto blade and whatnot and get it all nice, but this works. Okay, here we go. We got our foam cylinder head. Next we got some half inch stick on eyes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these eyes and we're gonna stick them all in there after we get this popper head on. Again, I'm just gonna double check the hole on this side. I'm gonna heat it up, make sure it's good, because if you don't have the hole widened enough on the popper head, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna get caught on the uh, on the hook eye there and it's gonna not slide over so well. So before we apply super glue, Okay, so before we apply super glue, we're going to do a test fit over it. Make sure everything's good. Okay, you can see right there, everything's looking good. Make sure it slips on there nice and easy. Next, take a little bit more super glue here. And we're going to pretty liberally put a pretty liberal amount on there. Okay, that's good. So next, now what I like to do is I like to position the popper in a particular way and, and then twist as I push on. So you kind of get a good, a good, nice, even coating. Okay. Heads on there, nice. Super glue setting. All right. That part's set. Now you don't have to go with eyes. Um, we're going with eyes because these are, these are going for sale to the commercial market. And it looks nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply our eyes here. Make sure we line them up in the proper way. Make sure they're evenly spaced in height and orientation on the head. And there you go. A quick and simple version of a Bob's Banner and really effective. There you go. So yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more. In fact, right after this, I'm going to be filming another uh, video for a um, flat wing sand eel uh, variation. So um, yeah, make sure to check out my website, liflyesmike.com. You can purchase flies there and also just, um, you know, look for some... Uh, just take a browse at some of the different patterns I offer. Um, Make sure to follow me on Instagram at LIFLIESMike. And, uh, yeah, make sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed the video. And um, hit that subscribe button.
if you uh, if you want to see some more. All right, have a nice day. Tight lines.